<laughs> so from here, I can't get his hand to the ground, okay? So a lot of times this is gonna lead to what we call a more south humora, okay? So we're essentially gonna be moving in the same direction we were last week, but we're not gonna pin his shoulder this time, okay? Instead, we're gonna go, we're basically gonna sit on his head, okay? And this isn't the greatest position if you're smaller, like you're not really pinning him, like you're literally just sitting on the head. That's not great control of the body, right? But it's gonna lead to, again, a myriad of different things you can do from here, okay? So, from here, I'm gonna to look to start to draw them up, okay? There's gonna be a lot of similarities with arm bars this week, okay? Before, when we were doing arm bars, we were looking at pulling here and bringing the elbow in here. This is very similar, okay? So I'm looking to draw him up as I step over his head and I'm covering his head with my knees, okay? All right, so there's numerous different things he's gonna do here and numerous different ways he's gonna react, okay? Let's assume first this is a situation and no gi where he's just keeping his arm tight to his body or in the gi if he's grabbing his belt or his lapel, okay? Very simple. We're always gonna be looking to bring his elbow to our armpit on this side, okay? Unless I'm very strong, if I go to start separating him here, okay, there's a lot of room for Ramiro's elbow to just come by here, okay? And if he's confident he unlocks his hands, like, he could realistically get out of this pretty easily, okay? So instead, I'm gonna be here, okay? Move your arm around. See, my body traces his arm when I attach my arm to it, okay? Move your arm around now. Now it's just my arms going all over the place, okay? So this is a pretty good idea. So very basic, if this arm's stuck here and we can't put it behind his back, okay? Like this is something everybody's learned if you're a higher belt. We're just gonna take his hand away from his body first, and then we're gonna put his hand behind his back, okay? Now again, heavyweights, you have pretty good ability just to finish him right here, it's not uncommon, okay? However, assuming he has good defense or we don't have the strength to finish him here, we're gonna go back to last week and here's how we're gonna do it, okay? I'm gonna start to rotate my body across so I can start to put this elbow on the ground for a pose, okay? We did this last week. From here, I'm gonna go back to laying on his shoulder. I'm gonna start to drive off my toe so I can step over the head, and it's the exact same finish as last week, okay? Way, but if he's strong too, or like, you know, stronger than you, like you're probably not gonna get far with that, okay? So really what we wanna do here is we wanna bring his elbow to our armpit, okay? So instead of like thrashing this arm around right away, we're gonna go here, okay? Now, just like Nogi, it's not too different. It's just gonna be a little more highlighted now, okay? Watch Piotr's fingers, okay, if he's holding on really tight. Again, kill that mentality that you're a big, strong dude here, okay? This is not a huge pop, okay? I'm not trying to rip his arm off of his belt. I'm trying to steadily pull his arm off of his belt. So as I'm here, it's a steady pull. And that will steady pull will loosen the grip on his gi, okay? And then from here, I redirect, I throttle the hand like last week. Right away, let's make this tighter than last week. Don't fall short here, don't cheat yourself, okay? Don't put the hand behind the back here. Look, that separates his elbow from my armpit, okay? It's also a weaker grip if I attempt the Kimura, okay? I want his hand close to his scapula. That way I can stay here and I can make the submission way, way tighter, okay? I'm gonna start rotating to the front of him. As I do that, I need a post so I don't fall on my face here and lose the position. So that's why I need to use my right elbow to post, okay? So as I'm turning, my right elbow is going down, okay? You guys see what I do as soon as I do that? I put my hip on his shoulder, I set my left foot up, okay? And then from here, I start driving so I can step over his head. My elbow opens just like last week. Let's make sure we're not just pulling the elbow through. Let's make sure we're driving and pulling the elbow through so we get a stronger attack here. And we're in a situation where the hand's on the stomach and I can't lock my hands. It means you don't have enough slack on your arm. Like I have more arm here to use, right? So it's just a matter of doing this part first and then you'll be able to reach through deeper, okay? So if you ever need to, you can start walking a little bit towards the head first. Like, ah, oh, my hand's here, I can't reach. That should give you the ability to use more of your arm to push through. And that'll help kill the habit of doing things like, again, stuff like this where you reach higher on the forearm, which is, in my opinion, just a terrible habit, okay? The second thing, uh, this isn't super major. 
Actually, it can't be. Okay. This, this will cover a few things here. Should I have both knees on the ground, or should I have my leg up? Okay. Either way. Okay. Personally, I don't care. Okay. The biggest thing I'm looking for when you guys are maintaining this position and you don't have the submission under attack yet, is that whether you're doing this or whether you're doing this, your hips are engaged. Okay. So what does that actually help with? Some of the situations I've been seeing you guys get in when we've been doing positional sparring is the bottom person with turtle. Okay, so can you turn to your knees, please? And you're like, oh shit, what do I do? Okay. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do here, but if we want the Kimura, we need to return him to the mat. So here, I, I'm still doing the same thing, watch. I still have leverage over him. So if this ever happens, I keep doing the same thing. I drive in, and I return him to the mat with my Kimura grip. Does that make sense? Oh, cool. Let's just stay right here. Right. We kind of have the framework already set for the finish, so Guys, when you finish for the next two techniques, you're, you're, you're going to do the same thing, okay? We're just going to look at different situations here where he's going to try to defend, okay? Uh, let, let's start with the one that's more like the uh, e grip, okay? And like an arm bar, okay, there's a lot of parallels here, like I've been saying. This can be one of his last lines of defense, is like, especially when you go to start separating his hands, you can just like go, oh, I don't want to keep ripping your hands, okay? He'll lock his hands together. Yes, okay. And then from there, He'll, again, keep his arms tight to his body. Okay, cool. If his arms are not tight to his body, let's say he's starting to drift this elbow away, you can just post and slide your leg over. Easy, okay? And you'll be surprised. A lot of people will give that to you often, okay? If he's not doing that, okay, this is how we're going to open up space to do that. You should keep his elbow still tight to your armpit for this one because his arm is still bent. We're going to talk about when we need to bring our armpit more to his elbow, okay? I'm going to make sure that my top pinky and wrist is bladed into his wrist because I need to unlock my hands here. So, for example, if Piotr were to unlock his hands and move his arm around, okay. I can stay attached to it with my torso versus this, I'll completely lose it. Yes, okay. Lock your hands, please. So now I'm using this free hand to get under his bottom arm to reach for his top leg to use my elbow to push his forearm out. What that's going to do is it's going to open up space so I can now slide my shin over the bicep like I just said. Okay. Now we're going to relock. Now remember what I just said. Okay, It's the same thing. But this time it's going to be a little stronger because now we can use our leg to isolate his bottom arm. So the elbow is still going to the armpit, but this time I'm using that chin on the arm to drive that arm to the mat. So now when I go to open this up, it should break a lot easier, okay? The only difference this time is you're not going this way to fully break the grip. It's not going to break, okay? The idea is to weaken his wrists, okay? So if you go, let's say we start here and we go this way first, his wrists are still strong. I want to pull the mobility out so that when I go this way, I have a lot of room to slide that wrist through. Okay. So last time the grip was broken that way. This time we're going that way, but the grip is being broken this way, if that makes sense. Okay. So one more time. So not here. It's not going to break here. Okay. Here first, so you have a lot of space to open it. That'll break the grip. You okay, bud? Yeah. Okay. Right. Turn in. Right elbow on the ground. Right hip on the shoulder. High step with the left foot. Big drive. So the other head pokes out. Now from here, guys, I'm seeing people make the wrist drift away from the back. Keep this wrist on the back, okay? Keep that elbow open, and remember, as you rip this up, make sure you're driving. Okay. He's locking his hands together, okay? I get his elbow tight to the armpit again. I pay attention to what this bottom elbow is doing. If it's open, I step over it, okay? If it's closed, that's when I'm going to have to use these details, okay? Wrist tight to his wrist. Bottom hand, make sure it's going through his bottom arm, grabbing his top leg. I'm using my elbow to flare so that forearm opens, so I have space to slide the shin bone through, okay? From here, I relock, I go here, and now I have all this space to open, weaken his wrists, and break the grip. Here, nice easy break, turn, lay on the shoulder, drive, go here. And as Eddie turns to his side, okay, 
people are usually going to do this if they're a little too slow. He's going to take a palm up grip on his top loop. Yes. Okay. So you guys see automatically it straightens the arm. Okay. So pulling up on this and bringing the elbow to the armpit, super hard. So very simply, let's just bring our armpit to his elbow instead. So we're essentially just going to lay on this. Okay. Now, exactly the same as the arm bar break we did. I'm going to take a palm up grip on his hand. My middle finger into his bottom knuckle, my thumb into his top knuckle. Same as that crab, like a lobster grip we use on the back when we hand fight. Same thing. Now watch. This is where a lot of people screw this up. Don't do this. Don't pull this out and lock here. He's going to go right back to his leg where he's going to lock his hands together. Okay. So this is what I want you guys to do with this one. Pull this out and keep this grip. Now from here, try to lock your hands. Look, I can push it away easier. In this transition, I'm gonna lose that battle pretty fast, okay? Stay here. Now watch, I'm gonna use this grip to put his hand behind his back. Now once I put his hand behind his back, watch, I'm not gonna let go completely. I'm gonna roll my thumb over the top and get my wrist grip again. Now we're right back in position, okay? Turn, elbow, and again, the same type of thing. Feel right. The reason why is because his arm's straight, okay? So again, bring your arm hip to his elbow, okay? Have the confidence here that as long as you're under his tricep and you're staying tight to this arm, he's not going to escape, okay? Hooking the knuckle line. Very important you use the knuckles or else you might not be strong enough to break this grip. That's what a lot of you were having trouble with yesterday. See, when I pull this out, you can't see his knuckles. Just like how we trap hands when we're on somebody's back, okay? Use this grip to put it behind his back. Now, I'm gonna tell you guys this right now, but be careful. The reason why this can be tighter than last week is you have the ability to put this hand all the way up to his scapula if you want. That's gonna make this even worse, okay? Now I switch this grip, now we're here. I turn, I get the elbow on the floor, okay, I open, see, like a millimeter pull. Make sense? Make no mistake, if I'm here and like it's not working out, there's nothing to say I can't just switch to the arm lock, okay? Or get an arm cut and switch to a seat belt and start to look for his back, right? That's all valid, okay? However, if you're looking to build a game around this, like we have a lot of good options here, okay? So we're gonna get two of them, okay? So we're gonna look at two situations here. Both of them involve stepping over to the other side, okay? It's gonna look like an arm bar without the arm, okay? So we're gonna start rotating this way, okay? Let's look at first if we can keep our grip or we just wanna keep our grip, okay? So I'm gonna step over and when I step over, my hamstring is gonna cover my own grip, okay? From here, what I'm gonna to look to do is lean towards the side I stepped over and fall back. We're gonna do all of this very carefully, okay? Because like that roll through we did last week, this one can get dangerous pretty fast, okay? If Caesar stays here, no problem. All you're gonna do is turn your knee in, open the elbow, lift, and you should get a tap or a separation here, which will lead to tap, okay? Just like last week, he's probably gonna come up to his knees. Okay, same thing. Press your knee into the, into the wrist, okay? Here, open your elbow, hold, okay? That gets the tap. Now, again, somebody game. This position does not stop him from rolling, okay? So a lot of times they will roll, okay? That, if I stay with my legs under him, again, same thing, push your knee and lift, okay? But again, he can just continue this process. So this is what we're gonna do to stop it. The very last thing I want you guys to do here is uncross your feet, activate your toes, and push your butt to the ceiling. We're gonna make a triangle, okay? We're gonna take this leg and we're gonna go over his head, and we're gonna put our hamstring over his shoulder, okay? Now from here, when he comes up, this hamstring over the shoulder, okay, come on this way. You okay? You yeah. okay? I'm gonna lock this on top now. Try to roll from this position. It's very difficult with this leg press here. Okay. Versus last time where I wasn't blocking the shoulder, I was over his head, right? Now from here, fight that urge to switch to a triangle choke. It's not gonna be a very good one. We're on the wrong side. Finish the Kimura here. Okay. Open the elbow. Okay. Keep the hand on the back. Tilt this knee in, and you'll get a surprisingly strong submission. 
looking at the same scenarios here. I feel him tense up. He's playing super tight. Okay, this is smart defense. This is good leverage. This is how good his leverage is. I can lift him off the floor. That means he's making his body like, like one solid like rock here. If I feel his arms are loose, that's when I do all the other stuff, okay? But when he's here and like, man, this is just not happening, that's when I do stuff like this, okay? My hamstrings over the wrist, okay? If he stays here, tilt, finish, okay? If he comes up to his knees, tilt, finish, okay? Jonah rolls. I'm gonna go with Jonah, okay? Tilt, finish. If not, if we're kind of stuck here, Leg over the head. You can force him to come over to the top by pushing off your toes. There's my triangle. Okay, this is over the shoulder versus last time. It was not. He shouldn't be able to roll through this post here. Okay. Now watch very slow because he's very stuck here. Right knee in, left elbow flared. Just a tiny pull. Okay. okay. Same position. Same idea, I can't get Jared's hands separated for whatever reason. This is especially a big one in the gi with people just, you know, plotting themselves up. So from here, as we're pivoting and stepping over, I'm actually gonna release the hand that's on the wrist, the stopping hand, okay? My hamstring is still doing the same job as the last technique. It's covering his wrist, okay? It's essentially gonna be my first hand, right? My top hand, I'm just grabbing my own quad. Okay, this hand's posting for support. You guys see, this kind of looks like S mount. Okay, now ideally, I want his hand behind his back, just like any other Kimura. So in order to do that, as I turn in, I'm going to straighten this leg to break his grip. Okay, this is a surprisingly strong movement. Okay, now from here, we're not just twisting. Okay, I want you using your three points of contact here to elevate your hips as you stretch through and pull this elbow up, okay? Do not forget, I'm gonna do it one more time, you okay with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do not forget, as you're doing this, it's not just your hips, that's gonna be the strongest part probably, but to get a more efficient tap, flare this elbow up. Yeah. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, cool, let's go. All right, so here, step over, pose, okay? If you're having trouble stepping over and like keeping your balance, this will help a lot, okay? So you have three points of contact with the bat. Make sure you're reaching through nice and deep. If you could grab your quad and curl your wrist, do it. Okay, that's gonna be the stronger grip here. Posting, elevating my hips, turning my hips, and as I turn my hips, I'm gonna use my hamstring to put his hand behind his back, okay? Up, turn, straighten, and that should help get the hamstring back there. Good, okay. Now, if I was doing this live, I just wouldn't I just wouldn't stop doing that motion, okay? I would just keep it, okay? But for now, if you want to just focus on getting the hand behind the back too, do the motion once, get the hand there, kind of settle here, and now just repeat the motion, okay? Heels curled, hips up, hips turning, and as I'm turning, I'm lifting the elbow, and that should make a strong finish.